So today we're gonna to talk about renting to own and a couple things to watch out for. So as a lender, I see these go sideways all the time. I mean, personally, would I enter into a rent to own agreement? No, no, I wouldn't. And here's why. So a lot of times the way it gets presented to you is, ah, oh, hey, your credit's not good enough right now. But like, if you rent the house, then you can rent to own it. And like your payments will go towards your down payment. You know, it sounds really good. It sounds like you're going to become a homeowner. You just have to, you know, rent and do your time. There's so many ways this can go wrong, okay? Now, the first thing is, let's pretend it's a legitimate seller because that's the thing you have to watch out for as well. There are people who try to defraud other people by doing fake rent to own scams. So that's something to watch out. But let's say it's a legit because there are companies that do this legitimately. First of all, in order for the money to count as your down payment, we would count as a lender, this is all lenders, this is Fannie and Freddie, let's say the market rent for your unit is $1,000, meaning that's what they could rent it for. If they're renting it to you for $1,000, none of that goes towards your down payment. If they're renting it to you for $1,500, then $500 could count towards your down payment, provided they're willing to do that. Okay, it's gonna depend on how that contract is written. So a lot of times people think all the rent they paid is gonna to go towards a down payment. And sometimes you have sellers, you know, where they're trying to be legitimate and that's what they've told the person. But in reality, that's not the way lending works. So it's really important that you guys know there are guidelines for buying a house that you have been renting to own. And how much of that rent you can use towards down payment is gonna be based on what the market rent is and how your contract with the seller was laid out, okay? There, is that overwhelming enough? Let's go further. Your contract is gonna say a time frame by when you have to be in a position to purchase the house. Because generally, even though you're renting to own, it's not the seller who's ultimately gonna be giving you the loan. It's someone like me. So you have to be able to qualify within that time period to get a loan to purchase that house. Otherwise, let's say for instance, you know, the market rent was a thousand, you were paying 1500, the $500 was supposed to go towards your down payment, but you have to buy Buy the house within two years, what happens if you don't qualify to buy the house within two years? A lot of times the seller can keep that money, okay? Because part of the contract is saying that you are a green, that you will purchase the house in full by a certain period, and one of the penalties of not being able to do that could be they keep the difference, okay? So, a lot of times people get into these scenarios with these companies or with private sellers and they're just so excited to be like, well, I'm renting to own, I'm closer to, I'm closer to owning, I'm closer to being there. You really need to read contracts, okay? Because a lot of times it's not a benefit to you and it would be better just to rent. Like think about it this way, like if you're renting a place at market rent, which is $1,000, just save the $500 on your own every month and then buy whatever house you want. Okay, instead of being trapped into buying this specific house, because that happens a lot too. People move in and they go, oh wow, I really don't want to live here, but they're in this contract. Okay, the beautiful thing about just prepping to buy is that the rent to own system puts you in a box that you may not want to be in. Okay, you want to have the freedom to pick any house you want. And if you're like, oh, well, I won't be able to get this house then there's no guarantee that you will be able to get that house, right? Like if your credit score is 400 right now and you have a rent to own contract that says you have to buy it within two years, otherwise they keep, you know, whatever down payment they had, whatever the difference is, whatever they're keeping, you're gonna have to work on your credit to be able to qualify right? You still have work to do. And that's why I think a lot of people miss is they go, oh, well, it's rent to own. Like they know my credit isn't great. Like I, they just sell it to me after two years. You have to be able to finance whatever the contract says. So if you guys are looking at one of these contracts, what you want to find out from them is, hey, you know, do you guys do the financing for me to ultimately buy this? And if they say no, you want to talk to a regular lender like myself and say, hey, this is where I'm at. You know, can I buy this? What are the odds? What do I need to do in order to buy this down the road? And understand what's going to be required before you get in that contract, before you potentially lose money. Okay, and look, I can't stress this enough because I really see these go sideways a lot. 
you are always going to be in the best position if you are just straight buying. The rent to own is a band-aid that does not necessarily benefit you. And I I just can't stress it enough. You guys need to be reading those contracts. You need to have the conversations. And realistically, the only time people really do rent to own is when they don't qualify qualify to buy. So if you actually qualify to buy and you're doing rent to own, that doesn't make sense. If you're like, well, I qualify, but they said I have to rent it first before I buy it. Why? That doesn't make sense. That sounds fishy to me. It should sound fishy to you too. So if you guys actually qualify to buy a house, you know, and sometimes people go, well, I didn't think I qualified, so I did rent to own. Talk to a lender first. Make sure you don't qualify before you go into a path, but then make sure you will qualify so that you can actually ultimately own it. So overall, do not rush into rent to own with blinders. Don't just believe the advertising. Understand the contract. Understand the details. See if you qualify to buy first, right? If you qualify to buy, odds are they'll sell you the house. Okay, it would be highly unusual if they were forcing you to rent a house before they would sell it to you if you could buy it now. Okay, so I hope this has been helpful. As always, I am licensed in 48 states, so everywhere but Utah and Rhode Island, I would be happy to help you. I'd be happy to discuss this. I just hope that you guys don't end up in a bad position and I'm the one that has to go, oh man, I'm so sorry, like we can't do anything here. These types of horrible situations where you end up giving away money, you know, giving up money, not understanding what you're getting into, they can be avoided and we're here to help. Thanks for watching guys.